welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over empties. So all the products I have put aside that I have used up, I'm going to review them for you. Now before we get started on the empties, I wanted to go over a little bit of a lipstick review. Um, what I'm wearing right now is the LA Splash Smitten Lip Tint Mousse um, Lipstick, and this is in Ravenclaw. It's from their limited edition Harry Potter collection. Um, so I showed you guys some swatches in my last video, and I wanted to go over this one in particular that I'm wearing because it's, it was really hard to work with for putting it on for this video. I was it's always harder to work with a darker product. So whenever you're working with a darker lipstick, liquid lipstick, whatever kind of lippy it is, it's going to be harder to work with. But this one was such a pain in the butt. I found it really streaky and the finish is very sticky. So you feel it on your lips. So I haven't worn these for a full day yet. So I can't really say how exactly long lasting they are other than the swatches that I did for you guys, which really shows how long lasting they are. But this is just sticky so you feel it on your lips. It was hard to work with. I noticed that the darker colors, even when I swatched them on my arms, were a little bit streakier. Hermione was great. I think Hermione color-wise, it wasn't streaky. It went on nicely. Um, it was just a nice pink. Um, so if you're going to try one, I would try that one because the darker ones, it seems, get a little streaky, so you have to layer. Um, but they are sticky no matter which one. Both of them that I tried, Hermione and this one, Raven's Claw, was really sticky. I just don't like the way that they feel on my lips, however, if I really like the color, and I'm, I'm going to get over it because I'm going to use these up just because they were a little bit more expensive, um, but they they were harder to work with, so I want to let you guys know that. And then also, I tried another um, product from ColourPop LAX, and I wore this in my August Favorites video, and whenever I was putting on Raven's Call today, I was like, you know what, this really reminds me of LAX. So I did a swatch for you guys. Um, on top is the LA Splash. Raven's Claw Lippy, and then on the bottom is the LAX from ColourPop. They're very similar. They give you a similar look. Um, I don't know if you can even tell a difference on camera. Um, it's just a very vampy look. Um, on my swatch, I can kind of tell up close that the um, Raven's Claw one is a little bit more plummy, and the LAX is a little bit more on the red side. So they are a little bit different, but you kind of get the same effect. And this one, I believe, um, from LA Splash is $14, and it's limited edition, so you might not be able to get it. Um, and then the ColourPop LAX one is $6. Once again, this one was a little bit hard, it was hard to work with compared to the other ColourPop ones that I've tried, but it was easier than the LA Splash one, um, and it wasn't as streaky. So you just had, it was more about being careful of your, um, lipstick kind of going outside of your lips and trying to stay in <laughs> the lip line. Um, this one was really streaky. So just want to let you guys know that this one's cheaper. I love ColourPop a lot better than this one. Um, it's a great color. It's a little bit more plummy, but I just want to give you a little review uh, of this for you guys. I'm going to be mentioning it in an upcoming haul, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging because I know that these are limited edition. All right, so let's get into my empties. So the first one I have on top is the Bedhead Rockaholic T-I-G-I -I Dirty Secret Dry Shampoo. It's a mouthful. Um, so I repurchased this a couple times. Um, me and my girlfriend have been using it. We really liked it. It was a little... Um, white whenever you put it on, especially the first spray, which as with me with blonde hair, I didn't mind it as much because then I could kind of put it in my roots and kind of rub it in. Um, so it wasn't that bad, but we stopped repurchasing it. We tried out some other stuff. Um, we tried out Big Sexy Hair, which we've been liking a lot, but it's really expensive. And we tried one other one. I can't remember what it is, but I'll show a picture above of it. It's like four or five bucks and I'm really, really liking it. It has a little bit of a white tinge. Um, sometimes, but I don't mind that because then I can get it in my roots, but it's really not bad at all. And um, it's $4. And it doesn't make your hair look greasy, which some of the cheaper dry shampoos make your hair look more greasy, which is kind of defeating the purpose of a dry shampoo. So I will link that one down below along with the Big Sexy Hair one. The Big Sexy Hair one I think I like better. Um, there's like no white residue at all. Maybe on your first spray, but... It, there's really no white residue at all. It's just a little bit more expensive and it's a smaller bottle. But the cheap one that I got is definitely the one I'm going to keep repurchasing as far as cheap ones goes unless I want to try out something different. Um, so I will link those down below for you guys. I recommend though that over the Bedhead Rockaholic just because it didn't really stand out that much and we've noticed that we like the other two better. Next I want to go over the Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray. So I mentioned this in my All About Primers video. I included setting sprays and I only had two. I had this one and the MAC Fix Plus to go, or the Fix Plus Setting Spray. And I do like the formulation of this. I think it's really nice. It really sets your makeup nicely. But the problem is the stupid spray bottle just gets stuck. 
Like I just like keep pressing and pressing and nothing comes out. And even if I get it to press, the one time it presses, it's gonna be out in the air, and then I go try to do it on my face the next press and it's like not working. So the pump is really pissing me off. I actually still have some product left, but I just like once I got the Mac Fix Plus, I just stopped using it just because it was so frustrating because it it wouldn't come out. So like I can't use it, so I'm not gonna just sit here and try to get it to work forever but please let me know down in the comments if you guys experienced the same thing or if you haven't because I don't know maybe I just got a dud and I really don't want to judge the product on a dud so if you guys have ones that the spray bottle works nicely let me know because then I'll repurchase it and see how it goes because I did like the uh, formulation of it Next, I want to go over the Sephora Daily Brush Cleanser. This is my favorite cleanser thus far that I have tried. I bought a Sonia Kashuk one. I bought one from e.l.f. Don't buy the e.l.f. one. It smells like, it's like putting nail polish remover on your eye brushes. Like, I hate it. Don't buy that one. I'm not even going to use it. It's just sitting on my vanity. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll use it one day because I don't want to waste it, but I should just throw it out. Um, but the Sonia Kashuk one is alright, but it's a pretty, it's kind of soapy. Like, it, it really soaks your brush, brushes, which I really don't like. Because if it's for a daily brush cleaner and you're trying to spot clean, you have to wait for it to dry. And that's kind of a pain in the butt. But this one, you don't have to wait as long for it to dry. It's a really nice formulation. It really gets the makeup off of your brushes without soaking them to death. Um, so I'm definitely going to be repurchasing this at some point. Um, but I just have so much of the Sonia Kashuk one that I just want to use that one up. And then once it gets kind of lower, then I'll repurchase this one because it was the best one that I've tried thus far. If you guys have any favorite brush daily brush cleaners, let me know down below. The next products that I'm going to go over are the Maybelline Dream Illumi Touches. As you can see, I have two here. And I also repurchased a third one, which is in on my makeup, on my makeup vanity. But these are such great products. I've used them so much. I've used them just as a concealer. But what I mostly use them for is on my brow bone just to cover up any veins. Because it's really nice having this pen. Um, and then it's like a twist up. So it's hopefully you, you can hear it. But it twists up so you can really control the amount of product. It's a little brush. You can kind of get right on your brow bone. And I just blend it in to cover up my veins. I've also used it as kind of like a foundation for the day. I'll just put it on the spots that I need it. So on my cheeks where I have redness underneath my eyes, on my brow bone, and on my lid as an eyelid primer. And that's a really good like kind of like everyday thing to do so you can minimize the amount of makeup products that you're using. Um, but I've repurchased this several times as you can see, so I've purchased three all together and I really like them a lot. Next I'm going to go over the Anastasia Brow Wizzes. Th these are both in taupe. I went through these so much guys, like I would have to have one in my purse, one in my vanity, one in my backup drawer at all times because when I ran out, it was just like the worst day ever. I was so obsessed with these. Um, but I like them more when my hair was a little bit darker of a blonde. I decided to try out some other products, especially because with this Brow Wiz, you get great pigmentation, which you would think, oh, hey, that's great. But because it was such great pigmentation, I'm very heavy-handed. It, um, I ended up drawing on my brows way too dark, and I still might do that on occasion, you know, if I use these and I it's a good day, then it's fine with this blonde hair. Um, it's just, I know there's those days where I have a heavy hand and I would struggle. I remember one time I was about to do a video and I was just taking like a half an hour to do my brows. And I kept having to take them off, put them back on. Take, and I was just having one of those off days and it was having such a heavy hand. And this was just really frustrating because it was so pigmented and it was so easy to draw on that you would... It, it, you might end up overdrawing. If you're really highly experienced and you're just really good with your brows, this might be fine for you. Or if you have darker eyebrows or darker hair, but because I was trying to control the color so much because of my light hair, like it had to be the perfect shade, um, it just got a little bit frustrating. Um, so I do want to point that out. And also these are really expensive, guys. So they are great. They're great quality, great formula, great pigmentation. But they're expensive, and if you have a heavy hand, they might not work out the best for you. I'm not going to be repurchasing these. I may, whenever, if I try to go dark again with my hair, then I will. Um, but I definitely don't want to make it my main brow product just because they are so expensive. All of my money went to my brows because when you use brow products, especially pencils, you go through them like water. So there are certain products like brow products, like brow whizzes. Um, mascaras and foundations and face primers like those things I just go through so much so with those types of products I like to use a drugstore products because I want the more expensive products to be the products that last like forever and I mean even if I'm using it like every day it's still gonna last me a very long time it's not like I'm gonna have to restock on them so that's just a little tip there great product 
but it's really expensive. You can't afford it. I would highly recommend trying out products from the drugstore. The next product that I'm going to go over is the MAC Prep and Prime Highlighter in Light Boost. I absolutely loved this product. I haven't used this in so long. It's just been, this is probably one of the first products I put in my empties bag, which is just a little Sephora bag. I just used one of those because, like, why not? Um, so I really like it. It's a um, twist up. So you just twist it up, and that's how the product comes out. Like the uh, Maybelline Dream Movie Touches. But it is really expensive. It's from MAC. Um, it's great quality, but the problem is it's expensive, and that is why I have not repurchased it. I really, I would love to repurchase this one. I would also like to try out the pink one. I can't remember what it's called, but because um, I just think I think they're a really great product and really pretty. But I just noticed that I've been spending so much money lately, um, so I've been trying to incorporate more drugstore products. Um, and that really helps a lot. So especially with stuff like this, like concealer, you go through quite quickly. Um, this is not where I want to put my money on a high-end product. I want to put um, concealer within the drugstore. And, you know, if I want to do eyeshadow, I, put, I buy eyeshadows from high-end products. So that's just like another thing to think about. But it is a great product. If you can afford it or if you want to splurge, I would recommend trying it out. It's really, really pretty. Another brow product that I want to go over is the Sephora Collection Brow Wiz. So I did really like this one a lot. It's a great color, especially for um, my eyebrows um, when, it, when I have blonde hair. But um, the problem was it was still a little bit on the expensive side. I think it was like $13, and I think at the drugstore I can get one for like 8 I know that's not too, too big of a difference. Um, but I was like, I think if I can find something at the drugstore, I prefer to just do that thing. Kind of, it's like like right in between Anastasia and a drugstore product. Um, but I did like it. I don't really like the comb. It comes with this comb. I really like the, you know, the rounded um, brushes that you use to um, comb out your eyebrows. This one's just like an actual comb, and I don't like that. Um, but I did like the formulation of the brow, um, of the brow pencil that comes on the other end. Um, it isn't super pigmented like the Anastasia ones, but it isn't super difficult to the point where I can't use it or it hurts to apply. So I did like that a lot. It was a lot easier to control how much I put on my eyebrows without getting too, too crazy. So that is one benefit. It's something I think is worth trying from Sephora if you want to splurge a little bit, but you don't want to go all out with Anastasia. All right, and my last product I'm going to go over with you guys are mascaras. So like I said, mascaras are something that you go through like water. So that is why I have four mascaras in here. So the first one that I'm going to go over is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Length Mascara. So this is a great product to lengthen your eyelashes. I used to use it a lot with my other MD, which is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume Mascara. So I use both of these together. So I would go in first with the lengthening mascara, and then I went in with the volumizing mascara. So I really like this combination together, but I really wanted to try searching for other mascara products that kind of combined this that also did a good job of lengthening, separating, and volumizing. So that is what I'm on the hunt for, um, products that are good with both of these combined. Um, but I did like these together. So that's the only downside is like I don't want to have to use two different mascaras. Now the next product is the Maybelline Pumped Up Colossal Volume Express Mascara. I loved this when I first got it. Absolutely. This would be when you first get it. It is your like your favorite mascara of all time. It was great. Lengthening, separating, and volumizing. Just like I said, I was looking for um, having these two products combined was this product. My only thing that I have to complain about is the fact that it has a very short lifespan. Like you'll still have a lot of product in there, but it starts to clump up. So that is the problem here. It's a great wand, but like it's not that the product dries out. It just kind of hardens. It's not as liquidy to the point where it's really nice to pull out and put on to apply to your lashes. It just kind of gets clumpy and you just too thick, kind of like glue, I guess. And that happens not right away, but if you're not using this on a daily basis, it's going to happen. And at least with mine it did wasn't as great for as long as I would hoped it would be. And I used this quite a bit when I first got it. It wasn't like I, this has been sitting in my drawer for two months and then I went out to get it. That's obviously like you didn't use it. But I used this so much and then it just died early. So it kind of sucks. So that's just a warning with this one. If you guys have the same experience, please let me know down in the comments. If you didn't, please let me know as well. Um, because I did, I did like this when I first got it like a whole heck of a lot. Alright, and the last product is the Kat Von D Immortal Lash Mascara. This is just a sample size 
from Sephora. Another tip is that if you are going to be um, getting um, products using your rewards points, I would try to get mascaras because you go through mascaras so quickly and it also gives you a chance to try out mascaras that are high end that you don't want to just spend $20 on just to see how it is and end up sucking or even if it does it's like wow that's $20. You can just continuously buy high end mascaras in sample form from Sephora. Like I've gotten so many of these it's like I don't even need to go out and get drugstore mascaras anymore really or any mascaras period just because I keep getting the sample ones so I just keep trying to um, use those as much as possible to push off my mascara purchases but this one was great I did really like this one a lot um, it has a very interesting applicator so it's like a little bit more spiky but I think the way that it is built it's really good to separate your lashes which I really like and I think it still provided volume I haven't used it in a while but it was a very close second to my Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. I ended up going through this first before the Too Faced one. I'm still trying to use that one up. But um, they're very close. I really like both of them. Um, but I think I like the Too Faced one just a tad bit better. But if you're going to try something high end, I would try the Too Faced one or the Kavlon D Immortal Lash one. Because um, this was a great formula. I really like the actual wand that it comes with. It's just the only downside is, guys, is that it is expensive. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Please let me know down in the comments products that you have tried and used up and love, or products that you've tried and used up and hate and want us to stay away from. Also, if you're not subscribed to my channel already, please make sure to hit subscribe below, like this video if you've liked it, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye! But, it's still... So I haven't... So I haven't learned...